Perfect. We are recording. Three, two, one. All right, everybody. Welcome to this episode. Is like, uh, like I'm I'm learning from the sensei himself, oh. um, Mr. Andre Quintana. If you don't know this man, well, first of all, I'm pretty sure you know this man because he's 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 known everywhere um, for great great things yeah. as well too. So uh, he's an amazing person. He's a certified coach. He's a podcast host. He's an eye care professional. He's also a productivity coach. Um, Dave, and he's also I like to I mean in our family we call him like Uncle Andre because I've been going <laughs> to his wife's practice since third grade now, which is which is amazing. So. Um, I owe a lot of things to him and just the love for dentistry now. So in this episode, we're just going to go over Andre and just really learn from him because he's a wealth of knowledge um, and he's also uh, a wealth of impact as well too. So Andre, welcome. Wow. Wow. Well, what an intro. A welcome. And thank you so much for all that, um, Emmanuel. That, that's really, really uh, flattering. And, and I'm so proud to know you and be your friend. <laughs> of course, of course. So we're basically just going to go, you know, some people know where you are, some people know who you're not. So we're just going to, I want to start from the bottom. So I know, of course, I know about you, but I'm going to be asking you questions to like, I don't even know you. So kind of yeah. take us back to when you were younger. Where was that? And, um, and you know, explain for that. Well, you know, um, I uh, am an immigrant of Cuba uh, and my family, uh, was from the countryside of uh, Cuba in, in the province of Havana. Uh, but wow. then my grandmother made a, uh, a, a move to Havana to find that big city opportunity like everybody does. Right. And that's, you know, she took my, uh, my mom there and that's where she met my dad. And so I'm from the city of Havana, but uh, there was a turn of events uh, in 1980, just to fast forward a little bit at around when I was ni like nine years old and there was an embassy uh, in Havana of Peru, where there was a conflict between uh, Cuban guards and um, and four Cubans that wanted to leave the country really bad. And then that escalated, and that's where Castro became very furious uh, about the injuries that those his soldiers had, um, somewhere around, you know, uh, mm -hmm. those reasons. And then uh, the embassy of Peru made an effort to protect those citizens. And then that's when Castro made a deal with, uh, you know, President Jimmy Carter, mm -hmm. who was a great humanitarian. And, um, and, and then that's where they opened up a, a, a large influx of Cubans that came basically somewhere between January of 1980 mm -hmm. uh, to about May or June of 1980. Um, and I came in May, uh, it was a shrimp boat packed the people wow. that we were supposed to come. So you got a picture of this, you got Cubans paying their families and certain friends to go pick up the Cubans. Cause it was legal. It was all, um, planned. Uh, but then it was, you know, you get there and it's just chaos, you know, everybody going wow. on different boats, wherever the government want, wanted you to go. So, you know, we could have been on boats, uh, um, I'm sorry, boats with, uh, immigrants, um, mm -hmm you know, uh, from, uh, from the jails mm -hmm. there, you know, there were prisoners, there were people that really were, were supposed to be in mental institutions, you know, we were all wow. together. So you couldn't really figure out who was who. And, uh, we came to the U S uh, landed in Key West. It took all the whole night. We left at 8, wow. 8 PM. Uh -huh. I saw the, I remember I was like 10 years old and I remember the lights of Havana getting far away in the distance. Uh -huh. And we were in a shrimp boat probably with hundreds of people, um, on it, in it. And, um, and then getting to Key West and seeing that big American flag was, was a feeling for me. I don't think my brothers who were younger experienced it. Like mm -hmm. I did, we went to an army base in Pennsylvania um, we got flown there and then my aunt, a uh, beautiful lady, uh, up in New Jersey brought us to New Jersey. Um, and then Jane's parents are from Cuba as well, but we met there when we were in college up in New Jersey. So, so that was my journey coming to the U S so English is wow. not my first language. You, you yeah. might notice that when I get, <laughs> when I get a little nervous, you know, my words will want to struggle between <laughs> spanish and english uh -huh. it's like your brain is thinking in two exactly. two languages right exactly and i think that plays a role uh later in life as well because you know you're trying to find your identity right mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day 
now I'm, I'm home. I'm, I'm an American. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing the best that I can right. uh, to, to master the skills you need to be successful in this land. And mm -hmm. then hopefully, if I'm successful enough, then my dream is to help people in areas of where I came from, you know, and things exactly. like that. That, that. That's amazing. And it's, it's, it's always like the, the stories of people when they come from like a younger how, how do I say it? Like they come from a life where everything just changes like in a snap. Right. So like, I guess like, what are some, what are some like fun memories you like you remember about when you were in Cuba, like things that you used to do and um, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I have the memory, uh, I guess the elephant is the one that's, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. uh, we're told it has a good memory, right? As mm -hmm. far as animals, mm -hmm. long-term memory. You dropped me in the city of Havana and I'll tell you, I got a good concept of east, west, south, and north. Wow. And I could tell you, I could go to that bay. I can walk by myself with nobody giving me any directions. Uh -huh. I, I have a picture of Havana. I've never been back. And I could tell you where everything is. Um, and uh, But some fun memories is just walking from my house uh, with my uncle and and heading down to the to the bay where it's walking distance maybe like five blocks and you can go fishing and diving wow. um you know uh run I, I was a i was a good track track and field guy uh, uh -huh. in high school so <laughs> i was a very fast uh sprinter from from growing up and uh they used to organize some you know sprint races uh -huh. around the block you know <laughs> we do the same thing <laughs> and 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 sometimes i didn't have shoes on <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so those were some fun memories, just simple living, like not, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you didn't have to have a million dollars to, to have a good life. It was just simple, very, very in the moment. Exactly. I would say. That's, yeah. that's amazing. And that's, I can definitely re relate to that because we used to, our community, like, I guess like a cul-de-sac neighborhood, we used to do the same thing of like, uh, we would have these like family parties where yeah. we would switch out through the, the neighborhood and we'd go to someone's house and they would just spend the night there. The parents would do their own thing. The kids would do their own thing. And then like once a year, we would like maybe travel. So it was, I just remember those things, but they were very simple. It was just eating and, and just and dancing, of course. There's a lot of dancing. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. So, so we come to America and what, how, you know, how was that kind of adjusting to an entirely different culture and having to kind of go from normal yeah. to, to a new normal, <clears throat> kind, of, kind of like now? Yeah. Well, you know, I was in ESL learning, uh, ESL, uh, you know, where I was put with a lot of kids that only spoke mostly Spanish mm -hmm. uh, for about two years. But, you know, life is about uh, getting the attention of people, especially mm -hmm. in our great country here. Um, it's, you know, you got to you have to do something to stand out you know, in business, in life. And I think I did that as, a, as, an, as an early child uh, because I had the mentor. Um, my first mentor was in the fifth grade. I had just been integrated into a regular classroom uh, with the fifth grade. They, they left me uh, a grade behind. And I was already behind from missing most of the school year, mm -hmm. the year that I transferred here uh -huh. uh, from Cuba. And then they put me back another grade because I didn't speak English well. And finally, in the fifth grade, I was a little older than the other kids. My fifth grade teacher said, you know, you are very smart. Uh, mm. my, my math skills were, you know, uh, off the charts. That's why I'm in the eye care industry. It's a mm -hmm. lot of math. <laughs> um, and, uh, but she, she noticed something about me, which is like she, she knew that, you know, I wanted to associate with myself with being a great American person, you know. Mm. Uh, and that's important. I have right. to talk, you know, probably a little bit about that because that's, that's kind of like what happens up where I grew up in New Jersey. It's like you have so many Cubans and Hispanics. It's a big melting pot. And you can make a decision. You can say, I'll speak Spanish for the rest of my life. And you can do it in that town mm -hmm. because everybody around you speaks the same language. Right. Or you can say, I want to do something. You know, mm -hmm. I want to do something about my accent. You know, I want to, I don't want to be, uh, you know, singled out or, you know, or stereotype, you know, I, 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 I want to be, I want to be a regular person and, and have success. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, a little bit later on, you're probably going to ask me some questions about this, but 
when I said something about helping other people, um, similar as my background, it wasn't that I'm going to go into Cuba and drag them out or go and help them in other countries. It's when they come here that, you know, one of my goals in life, and I haven't done it yet, is to um, help somebody kind of navigate the system mm-hmm. like I did and be a productive to this society. Wow. And that's just amazing because it's the whole pay it forward. And that's one thing, of course, I've, I've definitely learned from you and, and the business that you're doing and, and just how you carry yourself is that you're always willing to like immerse yourself into everything, but it's not, you kind of immerse yourself, but giving and kind of pr- pretty much bettering everyone around you. Yeah. So, and I like the, the mentioning how you wanted to learn and kind of going from, uh, what do they say? Big fish, little pond to now small yeah. fish in, in, <laughs> in ocean. <laughs> um, Thank you. So, so, what was high school and, and, and kind of transitioning to college, you know, in that time? Yeah. Well, I think, I think, um, you know, athletics really helped me out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of the first things that I was able to, you know, I mentioned to you, I was a, you know, that's a God given ability, you know, that uh, I was able to sprint my way into, uh, you know, uh, being a great football player in high school, Mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to perform at the pen relays, wow. uh, <laughs> uh, the four, I, I was in a team with the four by 100. Um, mm-hmm. And then I was, I, you know, I, I won, you know, freshman year, JV varsity, uh, a lot of gold, you know, medals. Um, and so, but, you know, being a leader, you can kind of do it in different ways, right? Well, pe- people would see that when I was on the football field, and maybe that's because I was an immigrant kid, like, some of the football players didn't want me to run fast during practice because hmm. they were afraid that the coaches, you know, might make everybody run that way, right. you know? And so <laughs> as a kid, I was, I was, I was, I was already making, you know, a ruckus creating, <laughs> creating chaos, you know, because I only had one gear. Uh, and so that was kind of fun. But, but I got the respect of people because um, I wasn't, I wasn't a bad kid. Uh, you know, I was associated with having a good heart. So when it was time to, to, to be fair, I was fair. I was never a bully, you mm-hmm. know? So I led by example. Mm-hmm. So I did, you know, uh, I was tough on the field and, and I wasn't weak just because I was a nice guy. You right. Know? So. <laughs> wow. So. That's good. Yeah. So you kind of like knew you understood your abilities, but you didn't let it kind of put yourself on top of everyone. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Um, so how, when did you end up meeting um, Jane? All right. So then, um, you know, yeah. I think it, I, I took a different route um, as far as college is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't do, again, it's probably because of my reading and language skills at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I took the route. I didn't do very well in my SATs mm-hmm. and I went to a two year school first, uh, got all my skills polished, even my public speaking ability. I had to do some presentations. I think that was the part why I chose, you know, to be a little bit kind of under the radar a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I was able to transfer to a four year school and it was the, it was the summer, I'm sorry, the spring of uh, 1992 where we went to South Jersey, my friends and I, and I stopped at a, it was a college bar restaurant kind of thing Mm -hmm. in South Jersey and Jane was there with her friends and we met there and um, we were from the same background which is odd you know typically we would have we would have had a better chance of meeting in our own towns which was very uh, you know kind of our culture Uh but we met somewhere separately that that you don't see people of background or Mm -hmm. her you know our backgrounds and uh, we started to be friends because she was in a relationship at the time, kind of, um, you know, she was coming out of a relationship and mm-hmm. I was, I was as well. And we just became friends and we were actually good friends that whole year for a whole year. Wow. And, and then we started dating after that. So we dated from, uh, 1993 uh, to 99. Wow. And then we, we got married in 1999. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good to hear. And then now you've been but, doing your oh, go ahead. Yeah, she, she was at Rutgers University and about to go into uh, dental school when I was trying to get into optometry school, mm-hmm. but I would have had to leave the state. 
So when she made the decision to stay in state for medical school, dental school, um, then I decided to kind of shift gears because I would have had to leave to Pennsylvania or right. upstate New York. Uh -huh. So I became an optician while still trying to get uh, a, a, an undergraduate degree in business. And then she went the route of dentistry. And, but I was trying to talk her into the going to the eye care industry. <laughs> and she wanted no part of that. Uh, and, and why did you pick the eye care industry, if I can ask? Again, it was with my comfort zone was with a lot of math. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was very math driven. Mm -hmm. And I was really, uh, I was intimidated a little bit. The one thing I've always been intimidated by, and you can't tell now, but it was my language skills. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was the, you know, uh, I think you came here when you were what six or seven. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I had to, I like it's. I didn't mention it, but the same route that you mentioned, I was in the ESL classes and right. had to come up like but the same way. You get a huge edge. Like I get a huge edge on someone learning the language because mm -hmm. Cuba, Cuba doesn't teach English. So mm -hmm. when you come here, you're zero. Oh wow. So I don't know if your country teaches English. Yeah, it did. It did, right? So, yeah. and you had a you had a head start on me. If you're seven trying to learn English as opposed to 10, wow, that's three years. It's huge. And that's it's three it. years ahead of me, right? Mm -hmm. And then the same thing happens with someone who's 15 versus myself, right. like Jane. She started learning English when she was four. So her English, oh. you could tell even when we were in our 20s that her, you know, the way she would reach for certain words in, in public speaking, mm -hmm. um, even though she might say it, I'm better at public speaking now. Mm -hmm you could tell she flowed better. So that was a big, that was to get back to your question. Uh, that was a big weakness in my life. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was pulling for business and, and, um, I care because of the mathematics involved. Okay. Wow. That's good. That's good yeah. to know. And that's, it's, it's amazing how like your now some of the, the weak, uh, the weaknesses that you had have now become strong suits and that you also teach as well too. So yes. getting into the eye care industry, um, I know you've had a lot of experience with, with where you started and where you are now. Um, what, are some, what are some struggles that you've struggles and, and big milestones that you've accomplished within the industry and that you'd also like to accomplish? Yeah. Well, one of the struggles I have personally, honestly, is that, you know, I didn't go and become the eye doctor, mm -hmm. right? That could control it all. Um, I'm an optician. And, you know, I have an MBA or a master's of education, business yeah. education, but not being the eye doctor is, you know, I have to be the guy who's like the pharmacist to the eye doctor who fills the prescription. Um, you don't get to control the volume of people that mm -hmm. come into the typical eye clinic. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have to wait until a prescription is given to a patient and right. then good. And then that's where my business skills come in. And that's where my networking skills come in mm -hmm. because I, I, I can, I can go into a town and tell a whole large population of, let's say a million people in Wake County that I'm the best at selecting eyewear for you and making great eyewear and right. making you look great with your eyewear and making mm -hmm. you see well, because the eye doctor can't do that. The eye right. doctor, once you come out of the eye exam, um, unless you go, you know, 20 years ago where doctors were doing everything, um, they just stick to what they know now, you know, and uh, I, I can take over and, and do the rest. Um, but it's a strong point in my life where I've mastered that art. Mm -hmm. But it's also a weakness because in times like this where a recession hits, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the people are going to get eye exams and maybe update the, the lenses into a frame mm -hmm. of their own and not buy a new frame where it's where I make my living. Right. 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 And so uh, little things like that. I, I think a big challenge is that um, I really have been trying to move, you know, as, a, as an educator, as a teacher, as a consultant coach, I've been trying to move from doing business one patient at a time to globally uh, impacting the whole industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but in helping my wife and my dental, you know, the dental office exactly. that you often see me at, it's a big, big task to be a CEO there. And so I, 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 I sometimes can't um, make a commitment to go globally mm -hmm. and separate myself from the, that environment because right. I'm such a big part of that team. 
So that's part of like a, a struggle of mine that, um, you know, there, there, there's a certain things that holding me back at times, but they're all good things. You I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, exactly. it's the greatest thing in the world when you can still be an impact on, on the kids, you know, who go to school and I'm the one that gets to pick them up because my wife is so busy with dentistry, you know, but at mm -hmm. the same time I'm running my business, you know, mm -hmm. that's a good place to be. Right. And I, I just want to say thank you for sharing that because I know there's, there's some people who, and even me, that's, that's one thing that like, I always try to tell people like in, <clears throat> like in social media, especially because we see people put up like their highlight reels, but they never really get, you know, they run, they never reveal themselves because everybody, that's one of the things I've noticed with social, it's a great, it's a great platform, but a lot of people tend to only show the highlight reel and they're afraid to show who they really are. Um, and so again, I just want to say thank you for that. So when, when did, after, um, you know, we can talk about Dr. Quintana for a little bit, when she transitioned to opening up her practice and the work that you do, can you just kind of explain more about what you do and, and just kind of how that's been for the past couple of years? Um, you know, and I'm going to merge that question with, with the uh, answer that I gave you just before. Mm -hmm. um, another big struggle is for your listeners out there, you have a male entrepreneur as, uh, and, uh, as opposed to a female entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. um, us guys, we're, we're, you know, we're built to be the providers, you know, mm -hmm. the hunters, you know, we're, <laughs> we want to lead. Well, my wife, because I've given her the platform to succeed, as a dentist, mm -hmm. uh, full time, never cutting corners, doing exactly how she wants to do it, has always been the highest earner in the family. Mm -hmm. And so, to uh, to 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 the male figure, uh, that sometimes is uh, a struggle, mm -hmm. you know. And so, my role in uh, in the company has been to uh, to impact her business in a way where, if you took me out of the equation. Uh, she doesn't have the ability to go out and meet people and create, you know, this big excitement mm -hmm. about her, uh, her dentistry because she knows just how to be a great dentist. Mm -hmm. But to your listeners out there, you could be the best in anything. You could have the best skills. But if you don't know how to tell the public that you are the best or show it, not just tell them. You know, don't, don't just be someone online that looks like they're the best. The, be the actual best. That's how I have impacted and made a big impact where, you know, in, 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 in your bottom line and your P&L and your, you know, and uh, your profit and loss statement, that's the line item that I make an impact on. So mm -hmm. if, if Dr. Quintana, you know, generates a, $2.5 million of sales in dentistry, I can tell you, I can assure you that a, a big part of that is some of those, you know, the things that, you know, you do well as, mm -hmm. and, and some of your listeners do probably very well. I was able to uh, marry the two together so that more quickly, eventually people would have known that she's the best, mm -hmm. but it happened more quickly because I was able to, to bring people that would refer other people and tell Mm -hmm. multiple families in Wake Forest <laughs> that there's something good going on at Wake Forest Miles, right? Mm -hmm. so, and mm -hmm. um, yeah. thank you. That's, and again, everybody watching this, it's, it's a hundred percent true because it's like everything that he just said, the reason I'm saying it's true because I, I, you get to see it all the time. Like when I was at the Y, you would see him at the Y making connections and it's, and it's never been a selfish connection. It's more of just like, how can I help you? become the best you, whether it's um, at the Rotary Club, going there and how he's given his value there, um, whether it's online, whether it's sharing. If you're part of any Wake Forest groups, you will see someone mention, okay, what's the best dentist I can go to? 50 out of the 100 comments are always Wake Forest smiles and different reviews, different reviews, different, and then it's like, what's the best dentist to go to in North Carolina or Raleigh? And you just see it. And it's amazing how that's another thing that I've also learned is, and even this year as expanding with business is like, we also have to allow other, I don't want to say other people to do things for you, but you, for you to really grow. And the way you've done it is amazing because you've, you've noticed, okay, this person cannot do this. Let me hone it and let me magnify it, which again, which is amazing. Um, so now with IQ Eyewear, 
Can you just kind of explain to the people what that is? I know there's an amazing sign in the back in the background, and <laughs> I've personally seen it. I, I told him it has the whole. It reminds me of like a Starbucks. Like I feel like I can just go there and just work and just kind of sit in. So I'll, I want to hear. Well, well, before COVID, that's that's the environment <laughs> that I that I was trying to create. You know, my first shop. I'm going to tell you a little story about how IQI wear uh, came about because. In 2006, 2005, Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we moved to Wake Forest in 2004 from New Jersey. And I went into the chamber office, the Chamber of Commerce in Wake Forest. And I Mm -hmm. said, I want want to have a membership. And they're like, what's your business? That was Miss Carolyn Mm Furr. She's now retired uh, from the chamber. But I said, it's going to be called In Town Optical. Mm -hmm. And okay, where are you uh, located? Uh, what are your hours? I said, I'm not open yet. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, most people get a membership for the chamber after the <laughs> open. I said, well, <laughs> I'm going to be open in a few months. I just want to, you know, get connected, contribute. And she's like, okay, well, this is the fee. And, you know, and, and she was so nice, so sweet. And I became a member and then I opened up. And from the minute that I opened up, I, was, I didn't have any employees. I, I decided I wanted to do it myself. I put a coffee machine there. That's where I met Albert from the uh-huh. coffee shop. Yeah. He came. He it's was doing uh, uh, Albert Barnetto from Wake Forest Coffee. Uh, he had a different kind of business where he was doing like secret shopper. Like he, he's, he's an amazing business person. But uh, he came in and, and he told me that he was opening up a coffee shop in Wake Forest. And he fell in love with the environment that I had. Mm-hmm. Like just like you did with IQ eyewear, but anyway, a, a a a good story, a cute story about that is that every business after hours for the Wake Forest Chamber of Commerce, I would attend that business after hours. I would volunteer. I would get them. I would get to meet the the, the big dogs in Wake Forest, mm-hmm. the Thomas Walters and mm-hmm. you know Jennifer Walters and um and and I was a one man show in my optical. So you got to think the Wake Forest Chamber. Uh, I think the after hours would start at 5 30 mm-hmm. um and uh, i would close the door because i was open till eight o'clock at night right close the door for a couple hours and then go back to my shop and people would ask me it's like aren't you open and it was you know one thursday a month or whatever but they would ask me and i would say well yeah the shop is closed i just want to volunteer and help and mm-hmm. and i got to meet a lot of guys and you know reciprocate and and not just try to meet a lot of people to try to sell them something. It was mm-hmm. genuinely trying to help. And at the end of that year of 2006, um, the, the Wake Forest Chamber has an award called the best new business, you know, Wake Forest Chamber of Commerce. And I won the award, wow. the, the award, <laughs> uh, you know, and I didn't even know I was, I was going to be nominated. Um, and when I asked, it's like, they were like, dude, like you, like, are the only employee you would close the door you always help you never missed an event mm-hmm. always helping and volunteering and so I, I got people's attention so that was then i later uh sold that business to an eye doctor in town and that's how i went to work with jane we have a child with uh, special needs and mm-hmm. i focused on on him and um and then jane needed me badly i helped her start in 2007 mm-hmm. um may of 2007 i she was doing it by herself after starting and then she ran into a little bit of trouble. Like she couldn't quite get the right team in place. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. Well, I, you know, I attract good people. A lot of our employees have been patients. They're professionals that come to us because they trust Jane, but then they become employees. Right. (laughs) You know, like the hygienist. Yeah. Um, uh, And that was a good testimonial uh, that, that you have a hygienist who lives in heritage going out and say, I'm working for the best dentist in North Carolina or, right. you know, in Raleigh. <laughs> and, um, and that's how I did it. Like, you know, bottom up pretty much, you know, just, uh, and, and, uh, putting the right team together. So that's how I joined Jane after selling, uh, Intel and optical, which was the first feel of that coffee shop, like mm-hmm. that Wake Forest <laughs> coffee company, uh, company environment, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and then I, um, uh, this year when we built this massive building, uh, you know, of course we, we had some challenges there because of 
some things with construction, but, mm. but we were overcoming that nicely. And, uh, and then COVID hit, but, but I created IQ eyewear mm -hmm. and that place is, um, you know, it's really, really nice inside and great product. And I play great music and mm -hmm. people love just coming in and smelling the, the spa like, you know, peppermint in the air and, just very nice, as you said. And uh, every time I go in there, I'm so, so happy to spend my day there. And that's what I wanted to be a, a home away from home. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's true. Cause I remember when we, I think it was August, yeah, August, 2019 walking in, there was just like a sense when you walk in somewhere and it was just like a, like you just kind of like relaxed and he just kind of explained it. It felt like home. You just need to leave your shoes at the door, go in. There's an amazing smell. There's just a welcoming, place and it's not like you're going in and you're a number it's like you're going in and you're seeing a family member um i did want to ask a couple questions because you've mentioned you've been mentioning some things and it's and it's really to me i'm starting to realize i'm like this is why i'm learning and like this is why the person that you are so two things what first of all what is family to you and how you know how is that important because i know your it's your family is a very it's a tight unit yeah um some of the the same principles um and entrepreneurship, it applies to family. You know, a business is like a family. You got to treat your employees like family. But in family, you find the need to the family and you feel the need just like you would as an entrepreneur. The need in 2006, 2007 was that we had to attend to, to my son, Matthew, who got diagnosed with autism and we we hit it hard with early intervention and and now look at him he's doing great um again family is just uh b being uh you know of course you, you're all related um uh, you know uh, but you have also have to apply the need where the need has to be met um you got to work as a team you got your your spouse whether you're male female um you have to be open to the person that uh, that has the dreams at the time, and um, and you have to have support uh, f for your children, for your your spouse, and for us, it was, you know, D Dr. Quintana was becoming a superstar, mm -hmm. and my role was to just take a back seat and lead from a different angle, mm -hmm. and that's what we did. Wow, yeah. important, and it's and I've also seen it stem also in your um, in the office because especially when I got my teeth cleaned and just every time that I've been there, it's just like you go in and it's like it's it's just a family member. Like there's no like yeah. oh man, I got, I posted it online. I was like going to the dentist is usually not something people look forward to, but for us, it's like perfect. I'm excited to go and see everyone. Um, the next thing also is networking. How how is that important and and I feel like you've done it in a way to where a lot of people try to mimic it. Not, I'm not saying local, I'm just saying every people try to mimic how people network, but you've done it in your own personal way where I feel like there's no one who can do it like you. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you, um, Emmanuel. Uh, you know, with networking is um, just picture how I lead my staff at the dental office, right? Um, you have, we have four dental hygienists and uh, four dental assistants, uh, like four front desk staff and two doctors. Well, my role is to acknowledge once I have a great team, mm -hmm. uh, once I'm uh, surrounded by a good, uh, good net, uh, uh, you know, a good surrounding cast. Cause when you go to network, you have to really choose where you want to network, uh, to be mm -hmm. successful. You have to be in the place where you fit, you know, not all networking groups or not all uh, segments uh, of business are good for your business, right? You have to niche, you have to, uh, and so it, it, it's kind of like what I do at work. Like, uh, you know, I have, I, I show the skills of my staff mm -hmm. because they're the ones that uh, help me be successful. Mm -hmm. Well, when I go and meet someone at a networking event, or if I'm trying to initiate a contact, I try to find out the best thing about those people. Mm -hmm. You know, why is it that I want to get connected to them? And so there's an intention there. 
right? And if I know so much about you and I research you, uh, you know, a lot, uh, at that point, then I can be your biggest advocate mm -hmm. around town uh, and, and, and talk and, and promote you and, and promote your business like, like nobody else can. That, that's <laughs> what networking means to me is, is you have to really uh, research people uh, that you be, want to be connected to. And you got to ask yourself why, you know, why do I want to be in your network? Mm -hmm. uh, why do I feel that we are a good fit together? And, and for me, I knew that the town of Wake Forest uh, and the Raleigh area was special. That was the first thing, determination. Like if I didn't want to be here, I, need to, I needed to just pack up my bags and say, okay, Jane, this is a one-year thing. Let's go to Boise, Idaho, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but when I decided that this was a special place, then I started to say, okay, who are the special people in this place? And why do I think they're special? And how am I going to tell other people that they're, they are special, uh, as opposed to when you're not doing that. Um, and you're all about yourself, mm. you miss, you miss what's exactly. around you. You know, you miss, you miss the, the mark of mm -hmm. what you're supposed to be doing. Wow. And that's and definitely take it. People watching this, please make sure you have a notepad. I feel like I need to start doing a disclaimer and make sure you bring a notepad after every episode. <laughs> um, because I mean, it's true. It's, it, he's, and he's said some really good things. One of them, especially being niche down, um, niche down, niche down, and also really finding your market. Cause that also goes, it's networking. When you even mentioned it, it's not just business. It's also with friends. Like it's the whole thing of, you know, you're the sum of the four people that you surround. Like if you're around, you know, four idiots you're going to be the fifth or if you're around four people who are extremely successful and it doesn't have to be monetarily you can be people who are successful at relationships people who are successful at personal development uh, mental being physical like if you're around four people who are at a different level than you there's no doubt that you're going to become the fifth now you have to do the action it's not just saying i'm here <laughs> yeah. um, but you have to do the action and so as you know as we kind of finish on i want to make sure you respect with your time I want to, you know, let's, people have seen it in the back. Some people have seen it, but what led to the vocal, the vocal and the vocal Andre of, of singing and, and just being able to create amazing music kind of explain to us how that's been, what started. And yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to show your, your yeah. audience there. Uh -huh. iTunes. All right. So what you're seeing there, it's a little brand that I, I created. Um, and, uh, it says iTunes, IQI, we Wake Forest. That's awesome. And, and then um, and you see a, a nice little setup with the lighting and uh, audio interface to be able to record. And then my podcast equipment is back there. Um, but it's EYE, uh, iTunes. And uh, I just, uh, I was chatting with one of my employees. Uh, you may have met her. Um, you know, Janice Williams, mm -hmm. you know, Phenomenal. and uh, yes. Um, and Ashley Vizcaya, but Ashley, uh, was a, you know, she's, she's a millennial. She's really smart. Um, uh, and, uh, and we were talking about what do I name the, the karaoke thing? It had to have a name. Right. <laughs> and, and I was coming up with some eye things and she's like, well, why don't you just put tunes behind it? I'm like, wait a second. This is brilliant. <laughs> Wow, because um, uh, I was I was thinking along the lines of uh, I songs, uh, I hits, mm -hmm. and when she said tunes and it was E Y E, I'm like, I don't think I'm violating any. <laughs> exactly, any, I, I might have I might have Apple come and and pay me some money, uh -huh. uh, right? <laughs> exactly, and, uh, and 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 so I have to give credit to Ashley for mm -hmm. during that conversation to mention it, and I'm like, that's it. I'm the iTunes optician. So anyway, I love to sing. Uh, I was recommended to the, to the chorus by my eighth grade uh, teacher uh, right before high school. And I was, mm -hmm. the, I was odd as an athlete because you, wouldn't, you, you couldn't find a lot of athletes that were in the chorus <laughs> in the glee club. <laughs> um, and I have a great passion for, for rock and roll, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, classic rock and roll. Uh, Who's some and, of your favorite artists? Oh man. Yeah, I know it's oh, a hard I mean, one. Look, like I I like all the ages. Uh like, like Lou Armstrong from mm -hmm. the you know fifties and sixties. Uh Nat King Cole. Nat King uh, Cole is amazing. Nature Boy. He's, 
he's uh i'm sorry yeah he's yeah. uh it, it, he uh he actually used to sing in spanish and he was big wow. in cuba yeah um you know the who the stones the beatles mm -hmm. of course um and so i have a wide range in and in, in the in the music that i like uh from all eras and uh and then what i decided to do is because of again copyright stuff you know I don't know a lot of the laws there, but I figured, okay, if I do a little clip of something, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm violating anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided to do a minute long, uh, you know, you can go to iTunes Optician, the mm -hmm. Facebook group. Yeah, and I'll make sure, um, I'll put all the links in, in this podcast so, so people yeah. can be able to check everything. And so, you know, with, with, with all the demonstrations going on, you know, I did Marvin Gaye, you know, what's going on. Wow. That's, that's in there. I did it the other night. Uh, I also did U2 mm -hmm. uh, about the great Martin Luther King, uh, you know, pride in the name of love. I just did that one the other uh -huh. day. Uh, so anyway, uh, that, that's, that's, it's just a way for me to have fun. And, and again, going back to networking, this, this might be a good, a good thing to, to wrap up uh, whenever you want to. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not rushing you, but with your audience. Uh, yeah. If you give me a runway to talk, I, I'll do it. For Look, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, when I network too, is I bring other elements of life into it because I feel that people really need to get to know you better, you know, and it doesn't have to be about what you sell as much as um, what you stand for and, uh, and what, you know, uh, why, why you are who you are in this community, um, you know, you know, talk great about your family. Cause I'm sure your family is going to appreciate it too. If I'm, if I don't talk great about my wife, wherever I go and uh, you know, then something's going on, you know? Right. But if you, if, if, if I'm putting her on a pedestal, but it's genuine and it's the truth, mm -hmm. then people are going to appreciate you. And then you can be a mentor too. You might have somebody who's having a rough time at home mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you say something, I have had this happen. I have had somebody say, man, something that you said about your, um, your, your family uh, at BNI, for example, uh, at a BNI networking meeting, they might say something you said this morning. Uh, it's going to help me communicate with my significant other, wow. you know, like, you know, you, it doesn't all have to be about business. Mm -hmm. it, it, it can be 80% about life. You know, uh, and then that could lead to people getting to know you better and saying, you know what, I'm going to do business with you because you, you're great at being around, um, you know, and having a cup of coffee with because I learned a lot about you, you know, wow. and I've, I've done that for other people have done that for me, you know, because mm -hmm. honestly, at the end of the day, people buy from people, not people. I mean, at the end of the day, the people want to create. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So lastly, the last two questions I want to ask you. Um, I have is actually, I want to ask one more just regarding the dentistry because I know right now there's a lot of pivoting every single day. It's, it's, I feel like right now it's with the dentistry or not dentistry, just business and life. It's like a basketball game every day. You're just pivoting a different way. So what are just some things that you have planned that you want to do? Of course, we don't, don't have to let know all the secrets and there's amazing things coming, but some things that you have planned kind of realizing everything that's going on and what you want to do in the next three, six, 12 months, et cetera. Uh, wow. Well, we had a different plan before, uh, then before this happened. Uh, now we just have to get, you know, I put a post out there on, on wake for smiles. Uh, this is a pivot. Like we went from seeing 60 patients a day, um, to, to doing, what the guidelines have told us to do mm -hmm. uh, 20 patients is what we're seeing. I think we're at 20, uh, 25, 30% capacity, but you know, I put a post out there about Dr. Quintana and, and what a champion she has been because she cuts no corners. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she is a true master of keeping the public and her staff safe. Um, that's all she cares about. It's keeping people safe during COVID. Uh, and if we have to take a hit in business, we're going to take the hit in business. Uh, we're going to do whatever we have to do, uh, but we're going to protect people. Um, after that, I think I have learned so much 
with how dentistry uh, has changed and um, what what's important right now being the uh, most profession at risk mm-hmm. when you have a patients in so such close uh, proximity with the aerosols and um, and the rate of infections that we don't know where they're headed. Um, I, I really want to be an advocate for me coaching, consulting, and I, I really want to learn what this new dental economy is going to be about because this is a mystery for all of us. Right now we're learning. Right. We're all learning. So I'm starting to to educate myself better on how to you know reach out to dentists that that want to make a, an impact with social media. Uh, you know, podcast is is one of those social media platforms that I uh, that that I'm good at. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, both in the eye care industry as well. And I just want to uh, help people figure it out with what is important to be when you're, uh, when you're communicating and so on social media, you keep, you can't be that person before just being cute and clever all the time, exactly. you know, with your social media pro you, you have to add some kind of value, some kind of safety, uh, you know, uh, uh, message out there about, how it is you're going to keep people safe while conducting business. And right now that's what I'm focusing on. That's, that's what I'm working on. And that's a great point that you made for, for the people who may not be in this, like the social media industry for any business right now, even especially dentists, the whole thing is staying top of mind to people. And you just explained that you can't, you know, the cute posts are good, but at the end of the day, you have to be educating people, whether it's, what you're doing at home, whether it's, you know, how you're preparing for, you know, if there's some people who haven't opened up their practices, what you're doing on a daily. Um, so again, that's, that's important. Um, the very last question I do want to ask you before we kind of give everybody the links and everybody can catch you, uh, or actually two, the first one they go together is, um, who or what influenced you to influence others as well as what are some words of advice for people watching this in all facets of life? Uh, that's, uh, that's great. Well, you know, I have to say that one of the first people that I met in uh, North Carolina when I came here was a, a gentleman by the name of Steve, Steve Hand, mm-hmm. uh, who is the area guru with the BNI. And I was, I was a 33-year-old guy, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and uh, I joined his group, one of his groups, and helped grow it from nine members to about 55 members wow. as, as you know, and I, year to year, I was, you know, vice president, you know, uh, president, uh, you know, intake committee. Um, and, you know, that was my p- first platform. So I, I think I, he's a very important person in, in, you know, having that, that, that platform to be able to network, you know, with my style mm-hmm. because he provided that. So, um, a person lately is Martin Brossman from NC State University. Uh, so there are three people. Uh, one of them is far away. Two of them are close. Martin Brossman is a genius. Um, uh, and he taught that social media course that I, I enrolled in after I, you know, got a master's in uh, business education um, back in 2011. And then uh, far away, uh, John Lee Dumas from entrepreneur wow. on fire That's yeah uh, when i started to 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 get that that you know i wanted the desire to podcast i i found him by accident he was uh, like on one of his early episodes mm-hmm. and he'll be the first one to tell you he was not very good at podcasting mm-hmm. and now he's one of the wealthiest most successful podcasters um influencers and and, and, uh, you know, I started listening to his daily show. He had, nobody else would put out a daily podcast. I was a geek. I was a, a nerd for podcasting. My wife used to get so frustrated with me <laughs> because that's all I'd listen to is podcast, podcast until I got to do create my own. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, and, uh, I think those are three influencers that, that I have to give credit to for, you know, and of course some of my teachers and professors and, and people like that yeah amazing amazing and then what are some words of advice for to leave for people watching whether that they're if they're they're younger whether they're older etc you know I, w- I would say uh you know be honest you know even if you make a mistake even if you do something wrong um you know be honest uh figure out how you're going to get better 
uh, from failing. If you're going to fail, just, just let it happen. Fail fast. Uh, the faster you fail, the, the, the quick, more quickly you get it back on your, on your horse mm -hmm. and, and you do it again. And, um, and then, you know, again, it's, it goes back to being honest, being authentic. I know it's a word that's being thrown around so much out there, but it, it is really, it is really a fact. Uh, and letting people know exactly who you are, uh, whether you're online, on air, as you are on the ground, be the same person, bring it down to you. Mm -hmm. that, that's my advice. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. And, and where can people, what, what, what can people find you and everything Ooh. that you do? LinkedIn. Uh -huh. uh, it's a good place. I check it every day. Uh, my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to 5,000 friends. I think that's the limit or 4,000, <laughs> whatever. Exactly. Uh, you know, good friends, you know, mm -hmm. uh, good, positive people. And uh, Instagram, the iTunes uh, uh, iTunes Optician, um, Twitter, yeah, all of them. Perfect. And is it okay if, if people are, uh, like reach out if they have any questions regarding podcasting, which is general yeah. business life, etc. Yeah, LinkedIn Messenger is, is a great platform uh, for mm -hmm. me to hear from you and and kind of research you a, a little bit in your background. Mm -hmm. It's easy. It's right there. It's all right there for you. Exactly. I can I can get to see the people that are uh, endorsing you and, and, you know, giving you recommendations. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's the best platform. Perfect. Awesome. Sounds good. All right, buddy.